So if like me you are a student and you're possibly getting a new computer at the end of the year or maybe next year for new classes and those types of things, chances are you might be trying to squeeze the most out of your current notebook and maybe your battery is dying or something along those lines so you want to get better battery and better performance. So today we're going to cover those two things. <laughs> Hey guys, CP Moddy here back with another video and today we are here with trying to squeeze as much power and performance out of our little notebook that we have currently before we get ourselves a new one. Now, some of the things that we will cover today might require you to buy some new parts or a new battery or something like that, but definitely there are many free things and just simple things to do to try and save yourself some battery. So we'll start off with what computer we have here today representing our school computer that might need an upgrade or just a full replacement. Now, today we have here the Asus X55V, which we checked out quite a while back, in fact, in this video up here. So, it's been with me personally for quite a while, and has been with the previous owner, or actually just been around for quite a while before I got it. This particular X55V is equipped with the Intel Core i3, and despite what the sticker says, it is an i3 in there. It's paired up with the GeForce GT610, which once again isn't really the most powerful GPU, and it has about 8 or so gigabytes of RAM in there. Now, with Windows 10 and a Samsung SSD that we got right here. So we'll get to why we have a new OS and a new SSD a little bit later in the actual video. So with that being said, let's kick things off with some pretty simple things to do that won't cost you a cent and will increase your battery life. Now, at the moment, this particular notebook is getting about 30 minutes per charge, but we'll definitely be upping that throughout this video. First and foremost, the most easiest thing to do is just disable things you're not actually using. For example, if you have a back keyboard that you don't exactly need the backlighting on, turn it off. If you don't use Bluetooth, turn it off. And if you're out and about and not using Wi-Fi and those types of things, turn it off. It's going to save you battery and overall increase some battery life in there, but it won't be increasing from 30 minutes to an hour. It'll just be giving you maybe 10 to 15 minutes per charge. Same with speakers and various other little things like that in your CD drive. If you have a CD drive, take that CD out so it's not spinning up and reading the CD every time you turn your computer on or every five minutes or so and don't use your speakers. Use something like some earbuds or headphones and it will definitely save you some battery as it's not having to drive the speakers within the laptop and you can just use your headphones or earbuds to listen to your songs and definitely you'll be saving some batteries there though. Once again, you won't be going anywhere from like 10 minutes to 10 hours. It will be a small increase but definitely worthwhile there when you sort of gather it up and put it with everything else. Now on the topic of continuing to disable things, also to look at your power mode. Every Windows based notebook since like XP, I believe it is, has some sort of power profile. Now, for example, the ones on Asus have things like eco mode or power saving mode or something along those lines, but look for something that will be sort of power saving. Now, once again, depending on what laptop you have, it'll depend on what the custom one is on there, but definitely set it to that power saving slash eco mode to save you some power. Usually what these will do is dim down the display to obviously save you some power right there, but also to go ahead and limit things like CPU and GPU usage and also to, on newer notebooks, actually disable the GPU when not being used entirely. So it will definitely cripple the performance, and if you're a gamer, you might not want to have this enabled, but definitely it will increase your battery life. So once again, if you are a gamer or maybe someone who needs the power of the laptop, you're going to just have to live with the fact that you need to turn it on to a high-performance setting to give your computer full power over that. Now, if you are like me and have an older-style notebook, this sort of dedicated GPU on and off state is not enabled by default and in fact you have to choose whether you want it on or off. Now both AMD and Nvidia offer great control panel tools to go ahead and do this and it's actually fairly simple. Locate your graphics settings and basically just turn it off and it will default to the integrated GPU found on your notebook as long as your notebook has an integrated one which most core series and AMD A series will definitely support down the line. Just remember though once you've disabled it you manually have to re-enable it if you're going to be using a program that needs the GPU acceleration otherwise it just flat out won't show up and yeah, you won't be getting the performance out of that. And my final tip before we go spending money on the computer is just do a fresh install of Windows. Whether it's updating to the latest version like this one with Windows 10 or just reinstalling the current operating system you've got, you will definitely increase the battery life. But how on earth does that work? You're probably asking and it's a fairly simple answer and that is removing the clutter that is all over your laptop. Whether it's small programs you don't use anymore but still start up and run in the background or just weird random 
own background applications that are there that you forgot about completely and they're just still running every time you have a computer on that can definitely get rid of them and cut down on your battery life usage. This will also to help in the performance department as not only will you have a fresh clean install of Windows there but once again you won't have those background applications chewing up CPU and possibly even GPU usage meaning you have a lot more for the applications you're using to take advantage of and if you're like me and like to have a lot of Chrome tabs open that will definitely help you right there. And now we do have to get to the point of maybe spending a little bit of money on this computer but first we do need to weigh up whether it's actually even worth spending the money on the computer because if you only get to be having it for a few more months and you just plan on putting it on a shelf and never using it again there's not exactly that much point spending a bit of money on it but if you have plans to use it as maybe a backup computer or just a secondary device you might want to start off with grabbing yourself a new battery if your laptop holds really no charge at all and is like 10 to 20 minutes it might be a sign of getting yourself a new batteries some versions of Windows actually tell you down in the notification center that you need to go ahead and get a new battery but not all of them will be detected and and it might just sort of go unknown until you realize you have no battery life left on the computer. So grabbing yourself a new battery can definitely help. Now if you're at the stage where the computer needs a new battery, they're going to be really cheap as well. For example, this X55V, I can pick up a battery for around $50 to $70 depending on where I buy it from. So for me, grabbing a new battery for this older laptop is definitely great because they're a lot more cheaper. Whilst you're doing that, you might also do want to grab yourself a second battery. What you can do then is charge up one battery, take the battery out, charge up the other one and then you have two batteries to take with you whether it's to class or work or anywhere along the lines so if you don't have access to a PowerPoint you can just flip in a new battery and you're ready to go and finally if you are willing to spend a bit of money how about grabbing yourself an SSD you can pick yourself up one for less than a hundred bucks in some stages to get yourself a fairly decent capacity and as prices come down in the future you'll be able to get larger and larger SSDs for less and less money the benefit of having an SSD other than the performance increase which is great on the performance side is also too it has no moving parts which means there's no motors to spin there's no read head to move around there's no excess amount of power being required to actually run the drive you can just have it in your computer it will reduce a little bit of power but definitely overall when coupled with everything else we're doing with the computer it will definitely save you some space in terms of how much battery life you have left and overall definitely when you put everything together it adds up to be a pretty decent power saving now I guess with that being said, what did I get as my final result? Well, with the Asus X55V with a mechanical hard drive and overall not that much optimization done, I went from 30 minutes of battery life up to one hour to one and a half hours with the new SSD, new fresh install of Windows, changing up my power plan so it actually went ahead and didn't use the full resources of the computer when on battery and also to actually physically removing the CD drive so it wouldn't use any of the power. I also to disable things like the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi when I was on the go and overall this thing was a great laptop to use in terms of how much more battery it had rather than where it was before. Going ahead and grabbing yourself a new battery and a new SSD can definitely give a new lease on life for a notebook and might actually show you you don't necessarily need a new computer but overall we did get a massive increase in battery life and I am overall very satisfied for what I got with basically not that much work actually done to the computer. All this can be done in less than two hours and and as long as you have all the parts with you, can be very, very cheap to do. Sometimes even less than $200, grab yourself a new battery and an SSD and you're pretty much good to go. So overall guys, that is my tips for getting more power and more performance out of your notebook before you go ahead and upgrade it. And overall, that's what we have here today. So guys, like the video if you liked it, get subscribed if you want to see more videos like this one and also to more reviews and other technology-based videos. And I'll see you all next time. And also to leave a comment whether you have your own personal power-saving little tips and tricks to help anyone else out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. What?